Got a new show on Netflix that you can get addicted to. We always talk about finding new shows. Uh, this one's awesome. <laughs> I would have, you know, I, I would have never known about it unless, you know, our booker pitched uh, Australian crocodile wrangler Matt Wright to me. And he's like, he wants to come on to promote Wild Croc Territory, which is on Netflix. So I sat down and watched it. My wife yelled at me because I couldn't get away from the television. <laughs> uh, Matt, the show is phenomenal, but on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being the top, how crazy are you? Mate, uh, no, not crazy at all. It's Jason, thanks for having me. Um, good to be here. Now, it's, it's, hey, it's like any job. If you know what you're doing, you're good at it. If you don't know what you're doing, you're bad at it. So, I spent a lot of years working with wildlife. Well, I started with deadly snakes when I was six years old. I was catching brown snakes, taipans, death adders, tiger snakes, and it just grew. And um, I, as I got older, the, the wildlife got bigger. Um, now we're catching 18-foot crocodiles, and uh, it's uh, I've got my wife involved. <laughs> well, 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 Beef Cheeks was, what, 15 feet, right? Yeah, yeah, I think he's a bit, bit over fifteen foot. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a large large croc. So what's that about four and a half meters? Uh, yeah, I think you guys said five on the show. Yeah, and I'm sitting five here meters, going, yeah. all right, guys, we need to start talking in feet. We need to start talking in pounds. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're looking at well, you know, he's uh, he would have been about two thousand pounds. So yeah. close close to a ton. He's um he's he's a massive croc on beef cheeks and. So that was yeah that that's the first episode that's the one that nearly oh we we can't we can't say too much we can't let too much out of the bag can we no I mean it's I mean it's kind of self explanatory but this is with crocodiles and you know here in the United States we deal with alligators I've spent most of my life in Florida so I'm very familiar with gators yeah um, but there's a big difference between gators and crocs <laughs> yeah there is <laughs> right I mean as far as an aggression side of things you know, not that alligators are docile by no stretch of the imagination they're territorial like crocodiles but crocodiles you know you get you get you get close to them they're going to come after you yeah yeah there's not much forgiveness in a croc um and you know alligators are i think i don't know maybe cooler weather or something but they are they're not as aggressive as what you've got for some reason the saltwater crocodile is one it's, it's the largest largest reptile on earth and um Oh, so, sorry, it's not the largest reptile, but it's the largest crocodile on earth, and it's the most aggressive. And um, in northern Australia, if you end up in any of the waterways, it's um, there's not too much coming out of that. Now, look at that. My my producer and my co-host, Nate, joins us from Mexico, where I don't think they have crocodiles or alligators in Mexico. Do they, Nate? Oh, no, we have crocs. Oh, do you do? Yeah, yeah. At, uh, I know on Cozumel we do, for sure. Oh, we well. Have we were at the I, beach and they made us come in. Oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. We'll meet Matt Wright. You call him, him and his people will come and relocate the damn thing. <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it looks nice where you are. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's very nice. <laughs> so, so, so watching the show, you know, well, I was sitting there watching it and my wife was like, you know, okay, you know, honey, we got to eat dinner. We, we got to, I was like, no, I, I got to just get through this episode. I got to, I mean, that's how addicting. This uh, Wild Croc Territory is on, on Netflix um, with Matt Wright and his crew. And she asked the question, she goes, why are they doing this? You know, why are they, you know, putting the cage down? And why are they wrangling this crocodile? Why are they doing all that? I mean, this is very dangerous stuff. She's like, why? And I told her, I said, because they're relocating. She goes, but why? <laughs> so yeah. why do people call you? Well, it's, it's looking after the the people and and the crocs like if um you've got an apex predator out there and he's chewing up your cattle your horses you you, you know your domestic livestock um yeah and and potentially gonna you know attack a human you you've got to remove it but instead of just shooting it and killing it these some of these animals are between 80 and 100 years old you know they're, they're australian icon you we want to look after these guys and we've just spent the last 40, 40 years bringing the crocs back from 3,000 up to a back to a, a stable level. So, you know, that's why we are out there now looking after the the wild population of crocs is, you know, we, we don't want to see them get shot. We A lot of tourism revolves around massive crocs and, 
you know, they're, they're a fascinating animal, the, the, the last dinosaur. So if a crocodile does take a life, uh, do you, you put it down, right? I mean, after yeah, unfortunately, it's a bit of an eye for an eye there, um, which is, I, you know, I believe it's a bit of a, 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 a uh, small mentality to do that. But um, unfortunately, that's just the way that the crocodile code of practice happens. If, if a croc does take a human, then the humans go out, they, they don't just shoot one croc, they'll usually shoot about 10 crocs in that same area just to get that one. Is that something that you try to fight? Yeah, I do. I do, but I, it's hard to hard to fight the task force with they're all trigger happy and they want to get out there and shoot shit. <laughs> that's that's what we do. Right? <laughs> that's how it, you had mentioned at the beginning of this conversation that you started out around all kinds of wild animals. Was your dad, your mother, your uncle, your grandfather, I mean, were they doing the same type of thing? Or were uh, you just a fan of people that did what you did, do now on television? I think, you know, I watched a lot of Outback shows when I, was, when I was a kid. Wanted to head up north, but just had a passion for wildlife, the environment, um, and just the, the great outdoors. And, um, you know, loved it. And just watching, watching the uh, destruction of our environment now over the last, sort of 20 years from when I've originally sort of started looking at it all, um, it's, it's devastating. It's just, you know, we're, we're on a on a pretty good path of destroying every natural habitat that we have left on Earth. Yeah, and you, you live in, what, the Northern Territory in Australia, right? And you have yeah. uh, a lot of land and, and a lot of different things that are going on and uh, res uh, trying to help out all these animals and the wildlife, so on and so forth. Uh, you're married and you have a child and your wife was a city girl that you train. So more importantly, like the, the, <laughs> the wrangling the crocodiles, you wrangled this beautiful woman from the city and you turned her into an outdoors woman. How did I know. You, I think she's, did... she's regretting the, uh, the decision now. Um, <laughs> no, she, uh, she, she, she grew up a bit in the outdoors as well. She lived on a few Aboriginal communities um, as a kid. She loved it. But her, you know, her later childhood was um, in the city around Perth in, in Western Australia. And um, fortunately for me, I, I had to fly down there to go and sort a bit of business out. And I met her at that, at that point in time and, and convinced her that uh, the outback of Northern Territory was a good place to live and, and hitch up with with the crocodile crocodile hunter um <laughs> <laughs> there's but, gotta be there's gotta be more to that story because on on the first i think it was the first episode of season one you know she kind of briefly talks about how you two met and she's like he flew in on a helicopter <laughs> and it was like love at first sight and i'm like eh, i don't know about that i mean he's a good looking guy and he's very charming and very charismatic but he lives you know out this is two this is two totally different worlds you how did you woo her what did you do oh. I don't know. I don't. I, we, you know, we're back and forth for a bit. Yes, I did fly into a remote island where she was having a, a, a raft up a big boat party with all her friends. There was about five boats all rafted up, all her mates playing all the tunes, and I sort of landed on the beach and styled on over. Um, <laughs> it was, and I was actually there. To sort out one of my business partners at the time, not to really pick up chicks, but uh, <laughs> I got rid of the business partner and picked up a chick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it doesn't it doesn't get any cooler than that. Crocodile <laughs> Wrangler lands on beach. I'm assuming you're flying your own helicopter. Yeah. Comes off, comes off the helicopter, and your wife, with all due respect, is extremely attractive, and she's out there partying with her friends. I'm guessing there was probably a guy around her that was interested or her boyfriend at the time this dude comes off a helicopter and she's like oh <laughs> there that was, that was a whole heap of seagulls sort of fluttering around her i can tell you <laughs> <laughs> they all got pretty disgruntled when i showed up <laughs> uh yeah you know, it'd be intimidating too if you're the guy that likes likes her you know it's like oh shit i ain't got a chance in hell now <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it was um it was all pretty sealed and dealed at that point of time and but she was going to London. That that was the big breaking point that she had a job in London. And mm. I was like, oh, Jesus, if she goes to London, she's going to meet some bloke over in London and live there, some 
mundane life of, I don't know, whatever you do over in London. But um, and he, <laughs> so, so I convinced her. I said, well, London or come try it out up here in the Northern Territory. And she did. And But it's, it's great. And we've actually just moved down to the Gold Coast. We'd, um, she's just about to have our second child down there, a little girl. Um, mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, so she's down on the Goldie now, right on the beach. The little boy, little Banjo's learning to surf. He's doing martial arts. He's got a cool little school up in the hills he's going to. Loving life. And um, when I get back, I'll take him back up north and we'll go and chase a few more crocs. How'd you come up with Banjo? I love well, the name, by the way. Well, it was a bit of a toss-up because I was going to call him Tarzan. But uh, <laughs> Kaya, Kaya is like, not a bloody chance are you going to call our son Tarzan. I was like, come on, we just call him Tars for short. Like, no one needs to know he's Tarzan, just Tars or something, you know? Um, <laughs> nah, nah. So she made, I've got, a, I've got a 17, 18 foot crocodile called Tarzan. Mm-hmm. Um, a kid called Banjo. <laughs> well, you know, in one of the uh, scenes that, you, you know, you go down and, and you you have your family with you and you're going to do some fishing and then you see some bubbles and there's a croc in, in the area that shouldn't be there. So you're by yourself. You don't have your crew with you. And when you do this, you know, when you, got, when you guys are watching the show, he's got all these, you know, guys with him, his crew. But your wife is very skilled in the outback. I mean, she knows how to hunt. She knows how to. She knows how to help you out. So you got to take the. But but banjo's with you, and not very far from the crocodiles. Um, is there a safety concern at 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 you know at any time that the croc's gonna you know bite <laughs> through the duct tape or go crazy or something? No, no, that's um that was quite yeah that was a bit of an effort to catching that croc without the team. Yeah. Uh, but um, Banjo was great. He um, he knew he knew the dangers, and he stayed up the top. Just walked along, watched what Mum and Dad were doing. Obviously, we still got our film crew and that behind the scenes. And but he um, he was great. He just sat there. He was, you know, told Mum he had a poo in his nappy and <laughs> needed to change, <laughs> and it wasn't the right time. But um, that, I remember catching that croc. Geez, that was hard work because, yeah, doing it all by well with Kaya. But you know, there's a there was a bit of effort went into that one. But um, we've still got that that croc um, now. I didn't. Um, he came back to our park with us. That was our third time catching that croc over a period of about four years, five years, because I kept putting him back in the main lagoon, and he kept ending up back in those in that sort of stretch of waterway, and. Um, yeah, I, I didn't realize he was in there when I when we were trying to get a bit of bait. But do you, yeah. do, you do you tag him when you catch him? No, the reason I knew this one was um, uh, I'd caught him before. Um, he he came out of a um, there was a crop farm nearby, and I'd recognised that crop before. He's only short, stumpy, but had a bit of his tail missing. And uh, but there's a farm there probably. 40 years ago, and a few of these crocs, oh, quite a few, I think, must have got out, and I've caught a lot of them since then. But, um, yeah, he was he was one of them. Mm. And that, uh, the last time I let him go, he um, tried to chase me back up the bank, not go into the water. And at that point, I was like, oh, I probably should have let him go because he's a bit of a safety risk. So this time, when I realised it was the same croc, I was like, well, you know what? You're coming back to my place. Yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Nate, you have a question for Matt? Yeah, Matt. So uh, with crocs, is it is it like other animals where like most of the time, if you leave them alone, they're going to leave you alone? Or if you're anywhere near one, you should just get the fuck away as soon as possible. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're right there, Nate. A lot of times there, you'll see crocs and they'll jump in the water. They'll swim away. But if you jump in the water with a crocodile, yeah, there's not too much of a chance of you coming coming back out. We had an incident there quite a few years ago. Um, and it was, it was funny, it was, it was a couple of local fellas um, swam across a well-known croc-infested river. They got across and they saw about a 15-foot croc sitting on the bank. They then decided, instead of walking across the bridge to walk back over, decided to swim back. That was the fatal mistake. Mm. They jumped back in to swim back. And the slowest swimmer got nailed by the croc. Wow. Well, 
I had a, a buddy years ago um, that I kind of worked with. His son was at a birthday party. This is in central Florida. They're on the lake, and his uh, son at the time was eight, nine, something like that. And somebody screams gator, and everybody starts to get out, and he doesn't make it. And the gator got him, and it was the, the worst time ever, just all of us going to the funeral. And, and I mean, this poor kid is in the water. But that's, you know, if you've been anybody that's listening, spending any time in Florida, and I'm assuming it's very similar to Australia. I mean, you go out in the ocean, you've got great whites. You got great whites here in, in the United States off the ocean. You're going to still do what you're going to do and just hope for the best. You can't be, I guess, afraid, but I don't know. It just it doesn't make sense in Florida. You're swimming in lakes when you know gators are in there. It just doesn't make any sense. Well, no, it doesn't. But I think gators, too, show, show themselves a lot more prominent than than a um, <clears throat> crocodile, saltwater crocodile. So I think gators sort of poke their heads up a bit and look around before they, they come into attack. Um, whereas a, a saltwater crocodile, they will do the same, but from a longer distance. And then once he get earmarks his prey, he'll drop down under the water and then come and come and grab you from underneath. Have you ever seen that? Oh, I'm sure you have, but it, you know, in, in real life, you're out there and you're looking for a croc and you watch the croc mark his prey and then go after it. Yeah, yeah. I watched a couple of dingoes there one day. They chased a wallaby, a small kangaroo, down, and the, it it was either the the, the dingoes chasing it or jump in the water and swim across the channel. And I was just there flicking a the line trying to catch a fish. And um, sure enough, I was like, we all had bets on. I was like, this thing's not going to make it. And I was like, no, he'll make it, he'll make it. And out of the blue, you didn't even see the croc. It just, this thing just disappeared, just like, boom, just gone. And that was it. There was no no other sign, Mark. It just went underwater and you never saw it again. It's so powerful. I mean, when you watch it, it's it's really amazing. And and on your show, Wild Croc Territory, when you set up these cages, you also have the trail cams, which is, yeah. I mean, th those things have excellent, I mean, the ones you have at least, I mean, are they're like 4K. And yeah. you, you get to watch this croc go after the bait in the cage and then, you know, tassel around and go, I mean, just how powerful these things are. And you talk about often, you're like, even if the jaws are duct taped shut, you can't stand on each side because if that croc goes left or right, it's breaking your leg in half, right? Yeah, definitely. Well, you got to understand, you know, you've got a head that's, you know, close to a metre long and probably half a metre in depth by, you know, probably, you know, it's, it's, it's solid bone. It's, this thing weighs probably 50 kilo. And when it swings its head, it was yeah. It will snap your legs in half straight away, like even taped up. Like it doesn't need its teeth. It will swing its head around, and then you, you get to see a lot of <clears throat> a lot of that on the show and wild wild croc territory. You you see the power of these animals when they're trying to bust out of traps. <clears throat> we had one croc there. We called Houdini, and for the life of me, I could not keep him in a in a trap. Like I caught him about three times, and the last time we caught him. Um, Willow wasn't there. I think he, I think he had coronavirus at the time. <laughs> he couldn't come out, but we actually caught him. And uh, he, um, I was trying to pull him out. Anyway, he fl he hit me in the water there and knocked me on my on my ass into the water. Luckily, Jock had just enough time to pull his head away. Otherwise, he would have grabbed me right there and then because I saw his head right here at me just snap as his tail flicked. His tail flicked me that way around the tree, flicked me towards him, his head, and then he came around and tried to snap me. That was, uh, I was like, whoa, well, that was very close. And uh, thank Christ, Jocko was there to pull him to the side. This is pre-filming, I'm assuming. No, this is on the show. Oh, this is going to be, okay, so I haven't gotten that part yet. I haven't yeah. seen that. Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay. This is good. I mean, it's not good <laughs> for you, but it's good for us. To watch. <laughs> Who's the guy in your crew that lost the fingers and he's like it's okay just as long as i don't lose an arm or a leg uh, but the fingers yeah. can go who's that guy yeah that's jock yeah 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 he's uh he's he's a hard working guy and he's okay with losing his finger were you there the day he lost his fingers no no i wasn't i wasn't he did that he did that well before i knew him so okay. and that was thrown from a croc yeah 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 all right, I'm, I'm getting I'm getting a vibe. It might not be from a croc. I'm getting a vibe that he just doesn't know how to use a handsaw or something. I think I think it was a power saw. 
A power saw. <laughs> yeah, he keeps telling everyone it's a Crocs. It's croc, right? <laughs> but it was a power I'm saw. Like, I was like, well, you weren't working with Crocs before you started working with me, so how was it a Croc if you didn't know how to work with them before you started working with me? So, but um, it's always a good story. He comes up and he's got his, he's got his little fed digits sort of hanging out there. And... <laughs> <laughs> Looking like Spock from Star Trek. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. These these guys that you that you that work I mean they work for you right they they work for you, um, it, for some reason I don't know if you've seen the show Yellowstone right with Kevin Costner it's on Paramount, but like I'm looking at these guys working with you and it's like the Australian Yellowstone these are like wranglers that come to help you and you know maybe drifters or whatnot or are these educated guys or long uh, long time friends uh, who are yeah no we're all good we're all good buddies. Um, we've, we've known each other for years. We're all good mates. And, um, catching Crocs is just favorite pastime. Really. We just love getting out there and doing it and, uh, having the guys that you trust and, and that can do it with, with or without you there is, is great. You definitely have to trust somebody when you're catching these things. I mean, oh, like, totally, totally. Yeah. you have to, you know, like, um, you couldn't do it without that. That's why you were having some issues with your your wife's brother, your brother in law, when he came in. You're like, oh, oh Finney, yeah. yeah, Finney. I don't we, know. If Finney's gonna. We laugh. still have a few problems with Finney, but we'll get over that. Finney, <laughs> Finney means well. He's always smiling. <laughs> he, yeah, he's got the shit eating grin on his face the whole time, doesn't he? Which Mate. you could tell how irritated you guys are with Finney, and even with the edits of the show. You know, you could, you, it's like, it's the facial uh, face cuts. You know, you go from what, this side to this side. You're like, something happened in the middle that just pissed everybody <laughs> off. And yeah, yeah, it's a common occurrence. And he, uh, he continues to keep that trend going. <laughs> poor Finny. Uh, yeah, poor Finny, poor me, he's my brother-in-law. <laughs> yeah, poor you then. Uh, Nate, any more questions for Matt? Yeah, are crocs like um, in the wild? You, you always see them hanging out on the banks together. Are they, are they solo hunters or are they pack type of hunting? No, they're they're all solo. They'll um, they'll try and um, take down a, an animal themselves. Once they've had a feed, then the others will move in. Pecking order: the biggest croc gets the food first, and then the smaller ones will come in after that. But no, they are solitaire animals. Um, and you know you get one big apex predator one big apex male in one area and then he will service probably seven to 12 females in that area depending on what other males are around and then they they've got their little um areas and when they when they cross over areas then it's like a big heavyweight um match you know they really go to town on each other uh explain how this works when somebody needs a croc relocated is there like oh, do they call it phone numbers like 1-800 get croc or something no, and, no. Show up? and then ha is there payment for it do they pay you to do this i'm assuming i used to i used to i used to do it for a job like a a paid job now it's um we just swing out there and just lend a hand and and remove the crocs it's instead of going fishing we go catch a big croc that's in, in, in but so what do you do for a living then we, we've got a lot of businesses in the Northern Territory. And as you watch through um, wild, uh, wild Croc Territory, you'll see the businesses that we run. Right. A lot of it's based on tourism. And I've, I've got my own Croc Park with some of the biggest Crocs in the world there, where I take people and show them. Um, I've got helicopter businesses, tourism businesses, um, TV businesses as well. So there's a lot, lot of stuff going on in the back end of what outside of just chasing crocodiles around the flat. So how did this show come about and you're able to do a deal with Netflix? I mean, did you have well, a relationship before? No. So we've done a number of shows on National Geographic. All right. So that was cool to have at Wrangler. And um, it's just hard to find on Nat Geo. You know, you, I don't know how you, how you find it. Um, and moving across to Netflix gives us the flexibility and, and the freedom to change up the, the concept a bit and having it more um, appealing to families and a different demographic rather than just serious croc hunters sort of catching out you know it was, now it's um it showcases some of the businesses uh our family life and of course catching some of the world's biggest crocs i think you should have a spin-off show called wild croc territory junior 
and have yeah. Banjo catching small little baby crocs and lizards. Because yeah. I find it fascinating to watch kids catch lizards. Yeah. It's uh, very fun. It'd be in it. You'll see on that, uh, I think it's on the show, but um, you'll see him uh, pulling on the tail of about a 14 foot python there that was uh, in our accommodation block. Yeah, well, the the, the scene where, or the, the part where uh, your wife and, and her brother and Banjo go to one of your the park and there's a small, like introducing him to crocodiles and there's this baby crocodile. And that was another moment. My wife walks in the room and the damn thing's running across there. I mean, jump it. I mean, it's jumping out of the yeah. water. Somewhere. She's like, what in the, what the shit is that? <laughs> I said, that's a crocodile. She goes, what? I said, yeah, you got, I was like, you got to, you got to stop doing what you're doing. You got to watch this show. This is fantastic. It's great. Uh, you got yeah. a, little bit of, a little bit of everything in there. Um, so when I was doing some research on on you and the show, when got, given this opportunity, I ran across the news story, uh, and I don't know anything about it. And if if it's a sore subject, please tell me. I, I don't know, but I know your name was involved in the um, uh, Outback Wrangler cast. That's not you, but Chris Wilson. But your name is mentioned in the story about yeah, the so after I, crash. Yeah. So Willow, just after we finished filming and um that's where yeah willow was out with a few of the other boys on another job and um yeah died in a helicopter accident and it is definitely it's it's a, it is a big sore point for us our family our friends you know I've, I've watched willow grow up over the last 20 years um and he's been you know passionate about catching crocs and living a, a pretty wild adventure and we were in business together for a while in a big earth moving company. I, I got out of it. He stayed in it. Um, he had his family and he left behind his wife and, and a couple of kids. It's, you know, it's tough, but we are, um, we're working through it. And, um, yeah, it's not, you know, it's just one of those, one of those things, unfortunately, you, we uh, deal in these machines every day of our life and you don't sort of expect the unexpected. Yeah, and I'm sorry to hear about that. And and I, I saw the story and I saw your name mentioned and I was trying to put it together. And um, I guess there's charges and there for other got people involved. And But it was like there's been a court order not to talk to you from the people that are involved. I was like, this is a, this is a thing. Um, yeah, so so there, there's there's a bit of, a bit of chat about that. And it was because we were first on scene. Um, you know, it was we we had to um, cover his body and, and load him into the into the flight into the um, rescue chopper and stuff. So, you know, the police are investigating. It's ongoing investigation. It's you know, it'll, it'll take its course over time, and the cops will get what they want to get, and and we'll we'll move on. But yeah, it's it's a bit shitty because it's hard to grieve Willow when when the cops are trying to do an investigation at the same time, and there's you know you. you you don't get a rest on, you know, rest on the family. Don't get a rest because, you know, he he was a he was a public figure, and and as mm -hmm. soon as something like this happens, that's that's all they want to sort of harp on on, on that is, you know, on his profile and and obviously mine as well. So, so that, what, what's the invest? I don't understand what the investigation would be for. I mean, it was an accident. He, he yeah, that's right, and we don't understand that either. So uh, we're just working with with him now. A lot of it because there was a copper there. He didn't probably do exactly what cops were meant to do. And it was in the middle of the bush. Other cops weren't there. So they're, they're trying to work out what what was going on. How does that work in Australia when you're, you know, in the outback, in the bush, you know, and wherever, in the middle of nowhere, you know, the police presence, is there, do, do they have, you know, carte blanche over everything or how does that work? I'm not sure. It's all that, all that, all that side of things still new to me. We're learning a lot through this. Yeah. And, um, you know, what, what you can do and what you can't do on an accident site. And unfortunately, probably some of the stuff that we, we did at the site wasn't in protocol to what the, the police would have wanted us to do. And that's, that's what they're looking into. So where do you go from here with the, I mean, this show is obviously, well, in my opinion, it's going to be very successful on Netflix. So you continue to obviously record seasons, but with shows like this and a guy like you and a crew like you got, 
Um, there's just so much material there. I mean, when you do one of these shows, the first thing that a lot of these production companies ask for is like, all right, what's the character building? Who's who? What's what? And you've got all those pieces with charisma that everybody possesses. So is there other plans for different shows down the road? Yeah, yeah, totally. Like um, the show is based around Kyra and, and myself and our family and the croc side of things and the catching is just, you know, the team that we work with at the time. Uh, and, um, you know, Willow was definitely a larger than life character and brought a lot of life to the show. So it's definitely dearly going to be dearly missed. And, you know, it was... Um, it was hard to come to terms when the show was coming out and Willow's not there to enjoy the, you yeah. know, what we had created. Um, yeah. So now, yeah, we, we will, we'll move on and we'll, we'll make another show and um, make, you know, in, in remembrance of Willow. Yeah. I, I thought it was absolutely amazing. I've never seen this before when you're taking your guests out that are visiting your park on an airboat and you go and you see the croc, that is missing like half of its bone jaw. crusher. Yeah, bone crusher. Yeah. And Croc is 20 plus yards away from you, sees you, comes right up to you like a dog. Yeah. Yeah. And and and, and almost says, Hey, I missed yeah. you, Matt. You know, yeah. it's, that's am well, amazing to see that. Yeah, it was. And he'd been with us for 10 years, unfortunately, only a week ago, two weeks ago. He uh, he was all he, he was killed by another croc, um, which was absolutely devastating because everyone loved Bone Cruncher. He was like you said, he was like a dog. I could jump in the water with him. I could work with him. He'd come up. He'd hang out. Nothing was too hard for him. But um, yeah, another croc moved into his territory and killed him only a couple of weeks ago. How how, uh, how often do crocs act like that? Oh, every year. No, no, no. As, as far as how bone cruncher. Oh, bone cruncher. They don't. You just you don't see that ever. Yeah. So it's it was, it was quite unique to to see to have that crocodile, and you know he was a favourite for um for the guests coming out. Um, we've got we've got a lot of other crocodiles there, but nothing like what bone cruncher was. You can't train a croc like you could train a no, dog, no, right? No. They got, a, they got a very small brain and they only focus on one thing and that's food. food. Yeah. yeah. That's why like when you see these different parks, you know, in Florida, they've got gator land and it's all about, you know, throwing the chickens up in the air and the alligators jumping in the air and catching yeah. the chickens. Like, yeah, that's right. God, they're trained to jump in the air and get the chicken. <laughs> no, that's just what they do. <laughs> that's yeah, just yeah. what they do. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not, not like a t teaching a dog to catch a frisbee or something. Uh, before we let you go, Nate, any more questions for Matt? Yeah, how do crocs have sex? Do they they do like doggy style or they go belly to belly? They go croc style. Uh, croc style, mate, in the water. Yeah. <laughs> a bit of a belly dance, a little bit of ballerina. And do they do the the the, the croc roll, right? That's it. Yep. No, they'll, they'll wrap each other's tail around, and oh, mate, was fucking. We'll you know, stalk, stalk around the side, and in he goes. Yeah, that's a dumb question, Nate. You know damn well you've got uh, bookmarked websites for this kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just I know the holes on the bottom, so I figured they that's couldn't it. jump on the back unless they're real long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't. No, you see, you see them going toe to toe, especially this time of the year. They're they're getting it on. I didn't know you had Crocs in Mexico. I know that like very, very rarely there'll be some. You know, you'll somebody will say they'll see one in Florida or this and this and that for whatever reason, but I didn't know Mexico had, I mean, I never thought about it, I guess, but yeah, yeah. Like I said, in Cozumel, I know they have them for sure. And then like a couple months ago, there was one on the beach in Cancun. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a few crocs get around that country. Do people yeah. call you from other countries to come and take care of their croc problem? Yeah. Yeah. I've been Congo and South Africa, Borneo, Asia. Yeah. Wow. Oh, so you're the guy. Like if, if yeah. I have a croc problem. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's good. It's good fun to travel and set up a new challenge. Has uh has the brand Crocs tried to endorse you? Oh, I haven't heard from them. And yeah, that's interesting. I've heard from every other brand, but not them. That's so stupid. <laughs> oh my god! Like <laughs> you've got a successful show on Netflix. You are the leading crocodile wrangler, and the the, the brand Croc has not oh, reached yeah. out to you to wear them on the show. Uh, Willow, Willow was the big uh, big croc wearer. He used to get around in his crocs every day. 
Yeah, or Izod, you know, to to have you wear it. Well, that's an alligator, but still, either way. All right, uh, Wild Croc Territory. It is currently streaming on Netflix. Uh, he is Matt Wright, and it is a fantastic show. And to you know, it's fun for the fans to watch the Crocs and and fight and and and, and bite and do all this stuff. But the message, Matt, overall is that you want to show people that they're animals. They deserve to live. We you relocate them. You do it with care. And to try to look at these animals in a different way than how they've been portrayed for for numerous years, right? Oh, totally. Well, it's not just the crocodiles. Crocodiles just one one animal that we work with. It's the it's the whole box and dice. The, the world that we live in now, the habitat that we're destroying daily. You know, the con- consumption that human the human race is doing is is just trying to slow slow people down and just say, hey, enjoy what we have. We, there's there's no race to the end of the world. No, yeah, that's a great message too. And you see that in the show. Um, you know, I mean, you're eating your own food that you kill. You know, the wife goes yeah. out, kills some geese, you cook it yeah. up and it's delicious. <laughs> yeah. I might get frowned on in Central Park here if I knock off a squirrel and start roasting it in the park. <laughs> Man, I mean, you can Paul Hogan the situation, you know, and he was yeah. in New York, right? I mean, that's what you got to do. You got to blend in and do your thing as an Australian guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> roasting a, a squirrel on a, on a spit rice probably isn't so much blending in. Yeah, you gotta you gotta find a bad guy, knock him out with a can of whatever, like he did <laughs> in the movie, and then you know pull out the this is the this is a knife. You know, <laughs> this that is a knife. Yeah, this yeah. is a knife. Yeah, you, you'll see me on the front page getting locked up. NYPD. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Matt Wright, thank you so much for the time. I know you got a very busy media schedule, and I appreciate you spending the time with us. Best of luck to the show again, Wild Croc Territory on Netflix. Uh, we'll talk to you soon, hopefully. All right. Thanks, Jace. Thanks, Nate. Yep, look forward to it. Let's definitely catch up again. Good chat. Please. Thank you. Take care, Matt. Bye bye. See you guys. Podcast the BS.com. It's better than radio.